Okay, here we are in the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals 2023. And this is going to be a rolling preview or view of the barn finds and hidden gems displays. And I am saying that with an S because there's multiple sections of it. Not just the one big one that like you see here in front of me. Now this is the primary area like it always has been. But this year, usually when we try to work in this area, we're trying to work with about 22 to 25 cars. And this year by June, we were up to 28. So it expanded actually up to 38 and then one car didn't show up. So we're down to 37 in total. Some stuff spread out a little bit more, but I'm going to give you an idea of what all's here. Starting with the one side, this Cuda is a 1970 Cuda. It is a 446 pack, and this thing is really unique because this Cuda is VIN number BS23VOE, or 0E10004. So that means it's a very early pilot car when they were introducing the new e-body lineup. And that's cool in its, of itself. Another really cool fact is VIN number 10005 from the same plant is the RTS Cuda. So these cars went down the line together back in 1969 because they were made 69 for the 70 model year. And they're both here. The... This is the immediate predecessor to the RTS Cuda, which I'll show real quick at the end is over in the red carpet area. But continuing this trend is a AMC, AM or a SC Rambler or SC Scrambler. It was found recently out in New Jersey. The new owner put it together enough from McHacken. And this thing is super rowdy. It's probably actually one of the loudest cars in here when they moved it around. It's got real hot engine with a very rare AMC cross ram, which is really neat. Next to that is a 1969 Shelby GT500. And this is another pilot car. It has a lot of unique little parts that weren't found in any others because it was such an early production. This one is a 1969 Plymouth GTX. It was pulled out of a garage in Illinois. Um, I had nothing to do with it, but it's been cleaned up just a little bit. It is running and driving, and the owner, the new owner brought it right here, basically. Next, so that's a 1961 Chevy Impala. It's ermine white. And it's out of Kentucky. Actually, it's out of Kentucky right near my friend Shane. Next to that is the Hobbs 1966 Dodge Coronet 440. It's very unique because this car has a build sheet from Mr. Norms. And at the very bottom, well, it's the build sheet from, you know, Chrysler for, from Dodge. But at the very bottom, it says 426 Wedge. And there's been a rumor that Mr. Orm got a handful of 66 Coronet 500s and 440s with 426 wedge engines. And I think one or two are known. This is the most recent second one to pop up. So that is pretty cool. Next to that is a 1968 Chevrolet Camaro. I think it's an RSSS 396 car. But really need time capsule. It's got a small block in there now. This right here is a 1970 Dodge Super B. It is a 446 pack car. And it doesn't run, but it rolls pretty easy, which is a pleasant surprise. Then here is a 1968 uh, Hearst Olds. And I'm pretty sure it's original paint from what I was told. But they. It's the owner runs it in, uh, I think, yeah, like Nitro Street Brawl and all that. This is another one that took me by surprise coming out of Missouri. It's a 1970 Dodge Challenger TA, and it's it runs and drives. This is another really loud one. When I saw this thing come off, come off the trailer. It was breathing fire. 
But man, look at the meats on the back of this thing and the stands. It is killer. Then we got a 1968 Dodge Charger RT, 444 barrel. I believe it's a four speed. No, it's an automatic. Remember, I had to move it earlier. And it's basically original. This is a rather unique car, which I'll do a full video on later. It's, we've 99% sure that we've tracked it all the way back to the original owner. And this is Don Schumacher's Wonder Wagon. At least the body is. The, we're pretty sure the frame isn't, but the body is. And right here is my little booth area where I, oh, that's my map, where I set up and was selling books and had photo slideshow and had people coming and lining up. This is a really cool 59 Corvette. It's still in the original family from the owner. It's currently owned by two nieces. It was their uncle's car. And I guess they used to pile five people into this car. It's really neat. I'll add a picture of uh, the story. Here's my friend Tom Rossman's 1970 Charger RT. And it's a 999 silver car. It was brought here by Seth and Ryan Dijenhart. They're continual contributors to the Barn Find Display, and Seth now runs Zone 4 for the most part. This is something right up my own alley. It's a 71 Challenger RT 446 pack. And I don't know if you can see, it's pretty crusty. Just exterior. It's not, it's not rusty, it's just well patinaed. 446 spec, 4 speed, 1 of 127 4 speed RTs like this. But I don't know why it has an Argent shaker. Shouldn't it have a black one? And it should have a black grill and black tail, but it has Argent, which I don't know if enough about that to comment. This is really neat. 72 GTO, HO455 with the WW5 package. These things are cool. I like GTOs. Here's a Mopar 5150 70 Superbird that was rescued out of, was it South Carolina with the Shelby that's up ahead? 446 pack car, four or automatic. Here's a 1969 Boss 429 Mustang. Uh, it was raced in Pennsylvania early in its life, but was found in Houston, Texas, and Somehow or another, they were able to locate the original engine for the car, and they just got reunited yesterday. This is a 1969 Cornet RT with a 426 Emmy, and this car does run. It is an automatic car, yellow with black interior, striped elite. It was found in Griffith, Indiana. Oop, sorry. This is a 1968 Shelby GT500. It was found along with the Superbird. And its original condition, including lime gold paint and black interior. This is one of the more unique cars. It is a 1969 Dodge Super E. It's a pretty basic car, but it's a 999 paint code car, which means... It is a, you can special order basically any paint, and it was ordered in pink. Only known pink 69 Super E. I think there's like one pink 69 Dart Swinger somewhere out there, but that's about it. Here's a 1970 Buick GS Stage 1. Really cool paint. I love slotted mags. Around the corner is... This is a new area of the show for barn finds. It's usually, it's actually where that truck usually parks. But this is a 1970 Buick GSX, which is cool. I love GSXs. And it's really neat that, so this GSX is a daily driver. It's owned by a gentleman here in Illinois. And behind it, you say, oh, why is this Oldsmobile behind it? What does this deserve to be in the show? This car has almost half a million miles and is owned by the brother of the owner of the GSX. So we're like, oh, that's appropriate. 
Okay, and going through the middle of barn finds in the upper area, this is an extremely rare 1970 Hearst Old. And you're like, no, they never made a Hearst Old in 70. They made 68, which was like the one on the other side, 69, 72, and so on. They didn't make a 70. They made one 70, and this is it. It was found in a backyard abandoned. I'll post a picture of the entire story here in a second, but it's been rescued. It's extremely rough. I'm just going to swing around real quick. Ooh. It's extremely rough, but the custom spoiler from Hearst is still there, or what remains of it. There's a picture of, I think that's the only like known picture of the car at when it was like being used for promotional use. It's a sunroof car. The interior is mostly there, but man, this thing took a hard hit at some point, and it was sitting outside. The valve covers are rotting away, but Miller Auto Care, the sponsor of the barn friend area is going to bring this back and this is another miller auto care car it's a 1968 mustang gt one of 32 and uh, another one that they're going to restore here shortly what will probably happen is the cars will go from here back to miller they'll restore them and then bring them back to mccacken in a year or two it's a full restoration behind that is a 1964 Plymouth Belvedere. It is a 426 Max Wedge car. And when this thing came in earlier, man, was it loud. Oop. But it runs. It drives. It even makes the bed. No, it doesn't make the bed. I love the vintage stickers. I'll get the other ones on the other side. Original interior, original. This came out of Minnesota. Firestone sticker. And then back here is a very rare Buick Wildcat. And you're like, Ryan, why is there a Buick Wildcat in here? Well, because it's got the big engine, big old nail head, dual four barrels. It's a convertible. And it's got four speed on the floor so this thing i will say for all the cars that we have in barn finds this year this one gave me the most uh issues because man it did not want to roll i mean you would think a force speed would roll pretty easy this thing took us getting go jacks and spinning it around because it was such a difficult tar car to work with but we got a place thanks to my friends um I'm blanking because I haven't slept in a few days. Um, Pat McConnell, Eric Walker, and the whole crew, Doug Bertal. I mean, they, they helped me put this all together, and I appreciate it. And now we're going to go over to the lower barn fine area and uh, show you what they got. Okay, here's the lower section. So just for context, up there is the normal barn finds area. And we have an additional section down here, which isn't even the final section. We actually are in the lobby as well. But real quick, this area, this is my friend, the Colchins. They had the Superbird in the video from last year that was in Barn Vines and is now fully restored. But this is a recent acquisition for them. Well, within the last like six months, it's a 1969 Dodge Charger 500 Hemi car. I'll show you real quick. Hemi's still in there. I'm not quite sure on the color, but it's a white interior, which is really cool. Looks like it's a uh, Mac on the on the floor. Looks like it was a green car from the trunk lid. Got my favorite rims on it, slotted mags. Next up is a 1977 Pontiac Can-Am T-top car. And now I think these things are cool. I love the shaker hood. I love the bigger cars. I remember reading about them in Muscle Car Review and all that. And this is a really nice example. This one runs and drives. And I had no idea that they ever made a T. I didn't know they did T-tops. And that's a really good looking combo. I would definitely not throw that out of the, my garage. Well, it's pretty. Just a really nice, well-optioned 19. 
66 Dodge Coronet 500 with fully decked out engine and just a little bit of moss and mold on it. Next was probably one of the weirder cars in the whole display, but I'm talking with the owner the entire time since they bought it. It is a 1963 Parisian. I think it's a Pontiac Parisian. And since it's in Canada, you could special order some weird stuff. Like this one comes with a Chevrolet 409 in it. And that is factory. Now, when he got it, the engine wasn't in it, but I said if you could drop it in, that'd be great. So the engine, I believe it's the original engine. Just it's it was freshened up and put in the car so it could run. And so it's a black car, red interior, four speed car. This thing is just incredible, except for all that Bondo. And this here is my friend Tom Herdert of Rocket Restoration. They restore Mopars primarily. And this is a 1970 Roadrunner, 446 barrel car. This one does run and drive as well. And of the old school flame paint job on it. He brought it, basically, I mean, he actually leapfrogged it all the way from Washington here for his first time in barn finds, which was really kind of him. And definitely I know people have been drooling over it because it's also, it's an air grabber car. And the last car in this section is a 1965 Plymouth Fury four-door. It's got a 426 street wedge and a four-speed manual transmission. It was seen in Hot Rod Magazine. And this is a legit car. Look at that shift shift. You know what shifter this reminds me of? I did the video about a year ago on that 1966, I think it was a Polara um, cop or a FBI car. And it was a like a 3 to 3 four speed car, four door also. And th those are just so cool. At the show this year, we have counted four different four doors with four speeds in the show. That's the only time that's ever happened. But this is the second section of the show. I'll go show you the last remaining two cars. This is the last two that are technically in the Barn Finds Hidden Gem section. And it's gotten so big that we've now gone into the lobby of the show. This is a 1970 Plymouth Cuda 340 car. Very well documented. I've been told it was pulled out of a garage or something just a few weeks ago in Ohio. Blue car. But this one's something special. This one I will have a full video on because I was involved with it a few years ago. Oh, here we go. Huh? Here's the blue one. One of the 340, four speed. Sure grip, heavy duty, semi suspension. Two owners since new. Very cool. So this one I was involved in about in 2017. And I had the opportunity to document it. And I was actually supposed to see it again just a few weeks ago when it was pulled out of where it was in storage. But... That's when my Challenger blew up. So, unfortunately, I never got the chance to go document it when my friend Dean pulled it out of storage. But I will have a full video on this thing here in the near future. So, that's it for McCacken Barn Finds and Hidden Gems Display. Let me know what you think. Go back, check out the old video from last year on the Super Words and all that. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. To say that the barn finds and hidden gems display was a success is an understatement. I never had an opportunity even to go to the bathroom. We were so packed in there all day. And it was a constant stream of people talking to me, buying books, signing stuff. It was an absolute blast. I can honestly say that it was a blur. I don't remember much from Saturday and Sunday other than I talked to a lot of people, I met a lot of people, and I had a lot of fun. Well, here it is, a week after McCacken move out. Um, I'm recording this Sunday. Just now, finally clearing out my van. 
of all the McCacken, um stuff that I acquire. Like I carry the Jack, I carry some other stuff. And man, with Thanksgiving and the weather, it's just, it's beating me up. It took me a few days to recover. I don't even remember like Saturday, Sunday very well because it was just so busy. And I appreciate everyone who came out and said hi. I hope you enjoyed the show. Definitely looked packed from uh, the few times I was able to look out over it. And of course, I'll show you some of the pictures of barn finds being completely full. I know it was uh, rather, uh, we called it a hyper-stimulating situation. And uh, definitely lived up to its name. But uh, next video, we'll be back to normal with barn finds of other uh, shenanigans. If you guys have any comments or questions about the McCacken show or any of the other stuff going on, let me know. I don't know if you can tell, but it's snowing. It's currently 29 degrees out as of uh, my clock over there. So I'm going to get out of the garage and go warm up. So I'll talk to you all soon. Stay safe.